guys, welcome back to the channel, Malcolm V8. Today we're talking dual wide bands on V8 engines, or V6, V12, whichever. And from time to time I run into this because a lot of people and a lot of cars that I tune always only have a single wide band. A lot of guys don't want to put dual wide bands on there. And it becomes very important when you have two banks of cylinders because you're just assuming the other bank is doing the same thing. And that's not always the case. And recently I was tuning a guy's car and I got some very interesting data logs I'd like to show you. It's a classic example of why you should have two. Or at the very least, weld a bung in the other bank of cylinders and move your wideband sensor across and check both banks as you're slowly ramping up the fuel and the power and getting your car dialed in. In this case, it's exactly what we were doing but with dual widebands and I think you'll find this interesting. So let's go take a look at the data. Okay, so here we have his log and I ran it through an analyzer just to kind of look at what's going on. This is a, about 30 minutes long, driving various loads and conditions. It's not very high RPM or very high boost because we're just kind of getting it dialed in. And so what I did was I, I took this information here and I copied it out and I put it into a spreadsheet. And what I did was I was trying to look for, um, you know, a trend in the fueling and what's going on. And if we look here, we can see um, I have it colored in red where it's too rich and it's pulling fuel out and you can see the negative sign because it wants to pull fuel and blue is where it wants to add fuel. And I'm looking over here and the overall trend is it's a little bit too rich. I mean we can see that there's a few spots of blue but overall pull some fuel out. And of course now I'm remotely tuning this car so I, I can't see it in person, I can't hear it. Um, I'm relying on the data so I really have to do my due diligence and dig through all the bits of data I can find, um, you know, pulse widths, map data, and air fuel ratio on the other bank and compare this. And so that's exactly what I did. So let's go take a look now at the second bank of cylinders. And look at that. Wow, completely different. This is all saying that it was lean and it needs fuel. Look at that, 12% fuel up top here. Um, this is about seven-ish pounds of boost. So it. It's really not much at all. This car has a big F1A Pro Charger on it. It's going to make 30 plus pounds of boost. We're just lightly rolling into it, just kind of getting the car started and, and feeling it out. And this is really an, you know, an eye opener if you look at these numbers, because had I just gone by that driver's bank of cylinders and said, oh, this car is overly rich and pulled fuel out, and then we continued adding boost and moving up, I mean, we would have totally torched that motor. The, there's a huge difference, a huge discrepancy between the banks. And I was curious just how much of a difference it was. So I went ahead and put some numbers into the uh, spreadsheet and, you know, some calculations. And, and look here, this is, this is not a fueling map per se, but this is purely the difference between the cylinders, uh, excuse me, the banks of cylinders. So between driver's bank and passenger's bank, this is how much fueling difference there is. And this is unbelievable. I mean, we're talking like, look at that, 15% at 3,700, 12, 10, you know, 11, it's all real high. So we have a huge discrepancy between our bank of cylinders. And this is why I stress to people the importance of running dual wide bands on their cars, or at least taking one wide band bank to bank and checking and making sure, especially on a new build, that you have some equality there. Now, this particular car, the owner has gone ahead and, you know, he swapped injectors side to side, wide bands. Um, and a whole lot of other stuff. He's pulled the intake off, replaced uh, gaskets, he's checked for exhaust leaks. Uh, he's still doing his diagnostics. We haven't found the discrepancy yet, what's going on, um, but I'm really glad he found it and we, we know we're working on this in, from the early stages and moving up. Now, just as a sanity check of what something like this probably should look like, I went ahead and I grabbed a random log from the Zinc. It was you know, a fairly recent timeout, a 60 minute log from warm up to ripping around. Uh, just playing and having fun. So I ran it through the same process. I put it in the spreadsheet. I got the differences and take a look here. This is over an hour's worth of driving. And this was the differences from left to right bank. And you can see they're all, the bulk of it is all less than 1%. They're actually really close. A few of these white cells here are um, no discrepancy, it's zero, zero. So they're, they're identical. Um, up here, I see a little bit. It's still less than 2%, though. Um, I haven't dug in the log and looked at what it was. Like I said, this was an hour's worth of driving. There's, there's tippins, D-cells, uh, you know, all kinds of interesting driving going on. I did think it was kind of cool up here at 7,000 RPM. Uh, you know, we're looking at 0.1 difference between left and right banks. So sanity check holds true. You know, your banks should not be off like that, that car. 
So I hope this helps you guys out and helps you realize, you know, here's a real use case with real data from a customer's car showing you just how important it is to check both banks of cylinders so you don't, you know, torture your motor inadvertently. So hope you guys enjoyed. Take care. See you next time.